All right, good afternoon. Welcome. We are about, I suspect, to begin our descent and approach to Manchester, New Hampshire. In our earlier flight, 3265, there's Good day. Going to 132.65, Docker Tree Whiskey Bravo. Boston Center, Docker November Tree, Fort Tree Whiskey Bravo. Flight, flight number 310. Okay, let me bring up the speed. So, we, um, if you saw the last uh, video, we landed in Norfolk, Virginia for a short stop. And then we took off for Manchester, New Hampshire. I was going to go to an airport in Manchester, in uh, Nashua, called Boire, B-O-I-R-E. But it was, uh, it, it didn't have much in the way of approach information. I, uh, there was no way to, there was no RNAV, there's no nothing. Uh, the weather's so good, I probably could have done it anyway, but I decided just in the interest of safety, to go to Manchester, which is about 35 minutes north, a 35 minute drive north of Nashua. Manchester, a full service airport. We're landing at uh, ILS runway 35. Uh, you go ahead and do this now while I'm thinking about it. Uh, enter in our ILS uh, info for the approach for runway 35 is. Uh, frequency 109.1. We'll activate that nap 2. There's a VOR DME frequency at that same airport 114.4. We'll activate that as well. Okay, good. Now we're set up on that. What the do our minimums for this airport 465 Barrow 465. Five, we'll enter that. Okay, good. Now, the runway, runway 35 that we're landing on, ILS, runway length 9,247 feet. Uh, approach course is 352 for runway 35. Uh, airport elevation is 266. Missed approach info is climb runway heading to 3,000. Uh, flights were pretty uh, routine so far, but it's funny, I was asked, I don't know, a few minutes ago, how if it was uh, choppy or not, and it had not been, it was smooth air until we got over just west of Staten Island, and then, man, oh man, has it really uh, developed. There's our descent instruction as expected. Descend and maintain flight level 210, keep speed below 280 knots, stop our train with Keep Bravo. I'm not going to have a problem keeping this airplane beneath 280 knots indicated. But I'll tell you, our true airspeed, 330 knots, our ground speed, 360 knots. And let me uh, just briefly uh, describe what else has uh, happened. Set our altitude selector here at uh, right there at 210. Flight level 210. Good. Okay. Descending at 1600 feet per minute. Let's throttle back just a little. Showing us uh, 19 minutes at our current speed. Probably more like 23. I had expected our arrival time to be about uh, 5 p.m. local time. That is. Uh, uh, let's see, 2100, I would think, if I'm doing the math right, 2100, Anyway, what happened is a first uh, in my, I don't know, 160 hours of flying the TBM since Flight Sim came out in the middle of August. Uh, and that is, we had a tailwind of 99 knots. Uh, it wasn't entirely a tailwind because, as you can see, we're right now headed northeast. The 
can actually alter this a little bit just to make it a little more fun. You see this chop we're dealing with? Listen to this. A little clearer on which direction the winds are coming from. You can see right there, 271 at 71, 70 knots, so from the west. But regardless, uh, the winds, it's still technically a tailwind. And we were really flying, I mean, no pun intended. Uh, and uh, pretty, pretty significant chops started to develop, just as I said, west of Staten Island, and still with us, as you can see, bouncing, bouncing around. One thing I uh, will comment on, uh, Core Flight gave me the ATIS frequency, the Automated Terminal Information System. And uh, that's basically a radio frequency. Yikes! God, ugh, bouncing around here. It's a frequency you can tune into to get the most current weather. Well, for reasons I've explained, that uh, because I delegate ATC to the AI, I'm not able to go to uh, the uh, Navcom and enter in COM2. I mean, I can enter in COM2 but it doesn't, uh, I can't activate it. So I, it occurred to me, I said, well, what about liveatc.net? Now liveatc.net is a website that you can go to where you can get and hear uh, live air traffic control information, including ATIS info. So I um, went to liveatc.net on my phone and. Uh, tuned in the ATIS frequency. Air Tree Whiskey Bravo contact Boston Center on 123 decimal 75. Boston Center, Air Tree Bravo. Going to 123 decimal 75, Docker Tree Whiskey Bravo. Boston Center is there with Free Whiskey Bravo with Boston you at uh, flight level 243 for flight level 210. Okay, anyway, I said. What if I tune the ATIS frequency to Live ATC on my phone? Well, listen, I did that. Listen to what I got. Check it out. Now, we're probably still dealing with too much engine noise for me making our right turn here, by the way. Take a look. You see? We've come up here, past New York City, making a right turn here. Got to go this to the east and then hang a big left U-turn and land here at KMHT. Kilo Mike Hotel Tango. Runway 35. 360 obviously is due north. 350 is just north, north, west. Anyway, I was just absolutely thrilled to uh, to get to be able to get ATIS information. And to hear confirmation that the winds I'm landing, or the runway I'm landing at, is the active runway at this very moment. And current wind information, current uh, altimeter information, just really awesome. Got information November. One last time, listen. 30014. Okay, we've been cleared down to 16,000. I don't know if you caught it, but uh, the current altimeter is 3023. Once we descend below 18,000, we will uh, input that 3023. We'll see how accurate it is. We'll also get input from our ForeFlight app, which will tell us what the nearest altimeter is. 
i will say that never having been to new hampshire although i guess technically this is western massachusetts i didn't realize it was quite as hilly as it is but it is quite hilly showing uh 1634 local time 4 34 p.m again i've given myself an estimated arrival time of 5 p.m local but golly with a 99 knot tailwind we might just be a little bit early again beautiful fall day just a really need to go to New England. It's an outrage that I've never been there. The weather in Southern California today, looking at my weather station here, my weather station display that I have here next to my PC shows it at 87 degrees in my backyard right now on October 17th. Not exactly fall weather. And, uh, It'd be awfully nice to feel fall, cool fall temperatures. I missed what the outside air temperature was in Manchester, but the ATIS will tell us. 1 4. Temperature's 1 4 on the ground in Manchester. So, um, by my math, about what 55 degrees here let's check real quick together one four celsius is 57 degrees excuse me nearest altimeter is 3026 according to four flight we know the altimeter at the airport is 3023 let's go ahead and do altimeter at the airport of 3023 and now, we'll zoom in here and I'll press B and let's see what the sim thinks the altimeter is. 3035. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens with that. Let's hope we do not have the drama that we had on our approach into Norfolk. If you recall, where the PFD froze up, that was uh, alarming. All right, we've, but it eventually resolved itself. Anyway, we've inputted, inputted the, uh, we've inputted the frequency information. Let's go ahead and activate it on the PFD settings. Bearing one, no data as expected. Bearing two, 45.8 miles. 45. Point down to 9,000 in our groups of Bravo. Descend and maintain 9,000 feet on her tray, Whiskey Bravo. Got to make sure that your descent doesn't stop just because you've reached the altitude they told you to go to. The uh, autopilot will do that. It will stop your descent, and it's a dangerous mistake that you might make, presuming that you're still descending even when you're not. In any event, gas is getting a little light, 27 in the left, 17 in the right, but uh, only 11 minutes in the airport right now. So I was saying 41 nautical miles from MHT Mike Hotel Tango, that's the VOR frequency identifier for Manchester. I was about to see something else, but I forgot. Anyway, we're at 14,800, showing just 53 nautical miles from the airport. Oh, I think I was discussing, I don't know, whether we would, hopefully wouldn't have the drama that we had last time with the PFD lockup, but we still have good weather, so let's sink our heading bug, actually, forgive me, set our heading bug to our approach course of 352. This gives us useful spatial information about 
the direction the runway is pointed. You see this blue or cyan colored thing here? That's the direction the runway is pointed. Which is entirely consistent with what we saw here, and that is that if we're going to fly this way, we'll turn right very slightly at Nukem. Right more sharply, it shows sharp left turn at IHOB, left at November Hotel 78, another slight left at Yule, Yankee Oscar uniform Lima Lima, and then we're just going to be in our final approach for one way three five. So by way of uh, information, the approach plate that I pulled up for ILS Runway 35 at Manchester in New Hampshire shows that at Yule, right here, we need to be at 2,500 feet. It's three miles from Yule to our next waypoint. Center, Skywest 3291 is out of 13,500 feet for 1,000 feet. Which hard to see right now, but it, it's not granny, it's actually mountain. And then there it is, M-N-T-I-N. I think we're actually doing the ILS-35 Yankee approach. The ILS-35 Zulu approach actually, I think, has granny as one of its waypoints. Anyway, at M-N-T-I-N, we should be at uh, 1,600 feet. It's an additional four miles from that triangle to the airport, which is at 266 feet. That's the airport elevation. Uh, but uh, right now, things are going well. We're headed to our next waypoint. This says interesting. We're going to descend to, descend to 5,000 feet and uh, keep speed below 210, clear Sean. Descend and maintain 5,000 feet, keep speed below 210. Oh no, it's doing it again! It's frozen again! Okay, let's do what we did last time and deactivate the autopilot and see if that helps. No! Please don't let this be a new bug! It's a new bug! This is the second time this has happened now, in one day. The PFD is frozen. Okay, we're going to activate heading. Lock our heading. Let's... Uh, this is so frustrating. Deactivate the odd damper. Keep an eye on this. Okay, we're no longer descending. We need to be descending, however, so let's... Even though I can't see any of this, keep our speed below 210. Remember, this is now frozen. This is the second time this has happened in as many times. Twice in two times, we've locked up on our PFD screen. I don't know what to do. I This is a bug. It's a bug. This has never happened before. Now it's happened twice in two days. Or excuse me, twice in one day. I haven't watched my replay video from the last one to know how I cleared this. As I recall, I deactivated the autopilot. No. Come on, guys. Well, this is going to be a major impediment to being able to enjoy this game if this is going to start happening all the time. We're sending, we still have some information, as you can see. I don't know what, how to clear this. <laughs> we have, still getting DME information, but I, but without any of this working, God damn it. This is a big goddamn problem. We're still descending. Oh, I wish there was a way I could 
just reset it or something. I mean, if this was my iPhone, I would just power it down. Oh my gosh. If I'm fortunate enough to have somebody see this, all I have right now is my ForeFlight app. That's literally all I have. Uh, well, let's assume that since this is no longer working, but the autopilot appears to still be working, that if I press nav, that it will still fly the approach. It does appear to still be flying the approach. Okay. I just have no information. I don't have... Al the only altimeter information I have is from this. I'm having to just make deductions about where we should be. Okay, I will, but... I have to guess at what 3,000 feet is. And 3, feet, Docker Tray whiskey problem. This is a very serious problem. If they don't fix this... I mean, it's still working. You can see in terms of flying the... See? I mean, it's making this right turn. It's making this right turn. But I don't know how... Oh, it's back! It's back. Oh, thank Christ. Okay. So I'm descending at 700 feet per minute. I need to research this on the boards because what is this all about? This has never happened before. And now it's happened twice in one day. Hey, if I am, if, if somebody watches this video who knows or has an idea about what's going on, they told us 10 to 5,000. I was just sort of blindly clicking my altitude selector to try to get us to maybe what might have been 5,000. Okay, we're back. We're back. I need to figure out what saved the day. What 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 did I do that brought it back? Slow us down here. Show me it's just five minutes, thirty-five seconds. And I just slowed us down, so. Ugh. Oh my God, print screen, uh, uh, screenshot. All right. Um, I mean, guys, I'm open to suggestions about what I was missing as to why PFT screen locked up. I am completely at a loss, and I'm even more mystified as to why it came back. All right, making that sharp left turn I mentioned earlier, that I hob, heading now to LE is our next waypoint. Wow, that's Nashua. That's my destination. We're gonna fly north of Nashua. Nashua. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never been in New Hampshire. We're gonna fly north of Nashua to our airport. See, here's Nashua. Here, we're landing up here. Still in our left turn. That is just so disconcerting. So frustrating to see something like that happen. I've never... I've never seen that. I mean, I've made dozens of videos now of my approaches and landings into various airports. I've never seen the PFD freeze up twice in one day. In two flights, two for two. That is a serious potential problem. We'll see if uh, it continues to present, but uh, you can't help but draw certain inferences from the fact that it's happened only since the patch. Dollar Tree Whiskey Bottle, descend and maintain 2,500 feet. Down to 2,500, dear Tree Whiskey Bravo. Descend and maintain 2,500 feet, Docker Tray Whiskey Bravo. So we're getting almost ready to turn final. Remember, my uh, estimated arrival time was 5 p.m. local. I show us 12 minutes from 5 p.m. local, UTC 2048. Making that left turn, you can see us here. Keep continue turning left.
Your speed's fine, 173. Keep an eye on that. Inertial separator is activated, but we'll go through our gift fleet checklist here momentarily. Please, if someone has an idea as to what's caused that PFD freeze, let me know. Here's the airport. Three Whiskey Bravo, you were one zero miles south of Manchester. Contact Manchester Tower on ONE two one decimal three when inbound. There's the airport. Tower on ONE two one decimal three dot her tray Whiskey Bravo. Manchester Tower dot her November tree four tray Whiskey Bravo nine or miles south inbound ILS runway three five approach. This is interesting. Something just happened. Oh no. Oh no, look. That's the airport. We're too high. ETC is a disaster. And it, why did it switch over to NAV on its own? I mean, it switched over to NAV 1, but I never told it to. Oh my gosh, this something's going on. I'm showing us just seven miles from the airport and 4,000 feet. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take the airplane, deactivate the autopilot. Landing. Something's going on. Landing. Go ahead and deactivate the autopilot. You can see we're far too high, but Delta we're... Tree, whiskey, bottle, cleared to land runway three, five. We're not one, two, five, three, and one, one. too high to manage this landing. The airport that I... Uh, pointed to earlier that I thought was the airport. That is not our airport. This is our airport. Getting a sync rate alert from poor flight. Our airspeed's far too high, but that's only because I'm descending very rapidly to bleed off airspeed. I'm sorry, to bleed off altitude, which is not a, not a problem. We're okay. Okay. Got our landing gear is down. Normally, I would have two-mile final going 170 knots. Normally, I would have shot this uh, with an ILS approach, but as you saw with your own eyes, there were problems. 500 AGL. Problems on the AI. Problems on, uh, uh, with the autopilot. Um, just struggling trying to figure out what's going on here. Even the throttle's acting up. Flaps in the last minute here. Got f three reds, one white on the poppies. Airspeed's now finally getting reasonable. Well, I don't know what to... Maybe I've just been a little greedy here with uh, flights in, playing twice in... Two flights in one, one day. Or it's, but it's it, this was very weird. This acted up. This acted up. Idle. Flare. Butter landing, at least. <laughs> and with the tailwind. Winds that are completely inconsistent with what ATC said the winds were. Oh, dear me. I don't know what to tell you. I'm gonna have, have to study this one. I'm gonna have to study this one. I, I, I just felt like I I was doing everything uh, uh, as instructed and uh, just issue city man. Keep that inertial separator on. 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm very concerned that um, this bug has presented now twice with the PFD locking up. This is just not how it's supposed to be. I mean, yeah, we're on the ground safe, but I mean, I followed their descent instructions. Even with the bug. And it, it just, uh, it just to general brought us into high Bravo. I don't know, man. I, I, I have to study this one to figure out what is going on. I mean, I don't know. Is it, is it, is it, I can't, I can't imagine what might be to blame. Anyway, we're on the ground at uh, 1654. Uh, initial estimated arrival time was uh, 1700 local time. But it, you'll you saw when we were on that um, final. I mean, I, the airport was even. I thought the airport was far. I, I uh, highlighted an airport that actually wasn't where we were landing on and I, it become a, became apparent to me very quickly that uh, we were much too high and I'm, I'll just check the video later to see if there's something I did wrong I'm turning a little early here just to avoid crashing into or taxiing into that uh, TBM right there or excuse me that looks like a Pilatus doesn't it Attracted our flaps. Chilly, chilly here. Ten degrees on the, in the sim. There's Gary. Boy, that forklift's hauling ass. Well, I'm concerned. I am concerned. Turn off the initial separator. I am concerned because if this... I've, I've never saw this bug in all the flights, and I've been flying it since day one, since the sim was released. I've never seen this bug where the PFD freezes, and it totally fucks up the approach. I mean, I, you know, here I am sort of blindfolded trying to continue managing the approach, and, you know, it's like I'm not busy enough on the approach to now have to deal with something like that. I don't know if that played a part in why we came in so high. I already depressurized the airplane, and... Uh, Anyway, I don't like it when things are screwed up. I expect things to work. And this did not... I mean, well, I guess I shouldn't complain that much. We're on the ground and landed. Very aggressive descent rate. <laughs> God. Uh, but the point is, you want to know what your airspeed is when you are landing. And I mean, look at this. Are you seeing this? Why is this moving? I'm gonna have to check my my settings. Why is this moving? We're not we're not moving. Why am I descending? Wow. I don't know. I'll check my settings again to see if there's something I've done. But anyway, just to assuage my feelings of guilt. Uh, you, you want to know that your airspeed is within the envelope at touchdown. And we were. Yes, we descended aggressively. I knew that I had to descend fast so that I could then both bleed off the altitude, but then all the extra airspeed that I picked up by descending so quickly, I knew I had to be able to bleed off as well 
So I'm not going to land this airplane at 140 knots. I'm just not going to do it. It's unrealistic and stupid. So with a little <sighs> aviation adventurism, we uh, solved that problem. But a couple problems presented themselves on this flight, and that was the weird PFD lockup again and then being brought in too high. Now, it's entirely possible that that second problem was a function of the first. I acknowledge that, but still lots to think about. Anyway, we're parked beautifully and nicely here in Manchester, New Hampshire, on what appears to be a beautiful fall evening. Uh, Microsoft uh, still hasn't uh, dealt with textures, seasonal textures yet. So all these trees are green, I s presume that uh, the trees in New Hampshire in October are not green. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. Um, another weird thing is that when I normally go outside like this, when I mouse use my mouse wheel forward and backwards, it will zoom in and zoom out. And I'm doing that now with my mouse wheel and nothing's happening. So I figured, well, go to the camera, external, zoom type, manual, auto, manual. So you think that manual would allow you to... Nope, nothing happens. So this is all post-patch bullshit, I've noticed. Even when I use this, zoom level. Okay, great. I shouldn't have to do that, though. I shouldn't have to do that if I'm using manual. So uh, anyway, post-patch bullshit. That's what this is. No one will ever see or hear this, but this latest patch, guys, I'm glad that you saved my V key, but you fucked up a whole bunch of other things. So I'll go check the forums and see if anybody else is having problems like this. That's it. Ciao.